One of the great books to help someone understand God's ways and even help someone understand the Bible better would be The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It's the first of the Chronicles of Narnia series by, by the great author C.S. Lewis. In it, there are some children that find their way to Narnia by accident, and they meet some beavers. And the beavers take them to their house and prepare them dinner and start to talk to them about Aslan. The children have, have, aren't sure what to think. Aslan is a lion, they're told, and they're told by the beavers that Aslan is someone that you'll be afraid of, but he's good. Um, and so the children learn about Aslan, and then they're told um, a little ditty that goes like this. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. What's the big picture of Christmas? What's the big picture of the birth of Christ? What's the big picture of Luke chapters 1 and 2? Well, it's actually not sentiment. It's not hot chocolate. It's not a cozy Christmas bed and let's make a fire because it's Christmas morning and we'll open some packages. No, Luke chapter 1 and verse 2 is the arrival of a king. Mary is told he shall reign over the house of David and his kingdom shall have no end. Now, when a king arrives, sometimes there's turmoil. Think about a land usurped by someone and then the king lands on the shore. Right away, you have to decide whose side you're on. Think about it like this. In the days before D-Day, June 6, 1944, the Allies spread leaflets in France. They let them know they were coming. And the people of France had to decide, are we going to stick with the Nazis? Will the Nazis triumph? Will we be collaborators with them? Or are we going to rebel and help the ally landing? They have to decide who's going to win. Or think about if you were living, for instance, in Kentucky or Tennessee during the Civil War, or maybe in Georgia. It's the Confederate States of America, but you've heard that Billy Sherman and his armies are coming. Who's going to win? You've got to decide if you're on the side of the current regime in power who's usurping or the true rulers who are on their way. That's where we are in Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. That's where we are with the birth of Jesus. Not just hot chocolate, uh, although that's very pleasant on a, on a winter's morning. No, a king is arriving. And before a king, it always makes sense to have a herald. You've seen the medieval epics or read the stories where someone says, make way, make way, make way for the king. Or when a king goes to interview with another king, someone announces the arrival of the king. John the Baptist is the announcer. He's the herald. He's to let everyone know the king is coming. But that means that there's going to be some turmoil ahead because not everyone will welcome the presence of the king. Some will want to stick with the old rulers. Some will want to collaborate with the enemy regime. And oh, by the way, if you think about the world operates, it says in the Bible that the world lies in the power of the evil one. Jesus is arriving to reclaim the world, rightfully his, handed over into the powers of Satan, run by evil religious systems, some from Rome, some from Jerusalem in his own day. The crownless shall again be king. The king's arriving. That's the big picture in Luke 1 and 2. That's the story not to lose track of at Christmas. That's the story to look forward to. The king is arriving on the shore. The forerunners come to announce, prepare the way of the Lord. God bless you. Serve the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God. Read your Bible every day and always seek to bring people 
under the wondrous love of our great King, Jesus.